Hello Wolfpack, I've just recorded this whole video and I uploaded it to YouTube and then I realized the sound wasn't on. And so, um, that's not a good start to the day. However, got to do it again here. Uh, the information's still relevant and we've got to get it out to you. So Bitcoin is in a rally right now and we'll just make it a little bit briefer this time. Bitcoin's in a rally right now, um, up from around 33k, it's on 37k currently. And so, there is the question to be begged here, um, or you can beg the question, um, you know, where, where's it going next? Is it going to 40K? Is it going to break upwards? Is it going to go to 45K, 48K? Is it going to break our critical trend breaker at 48K? If we break 48K, I'm buying back into Bitcoin, right? And if we break 48K, that would mean we break the Gaussian. It would mean we break the Bullmark support band. We break Ikamoku cloud. We break the 50 and the 200 day. And we also break the 50 week. So yes, 48K is basically the be all end all. Uh, however you use that phrase, on Bitcoin, um, we need to break that in order to be bullish again on Bitcoin. Until we break that, we're not bullish, right? And so for those of you who haven't watched my videos before, and apologies to those of you who watch them every day because it gets a bit repetitive, I know that. For those of you who haven't watched my videos before, I think Bitcoin is going downwards towards the 200-week SMA, which is this green line here, this green MA. Uh, that is historically where Bitcoin has gone when it's broken the 50-week, right? In 2014, we broke the 50-week, ended up at the 200 2018, same deal. And in the COVID drop, we had the same deal as well. Even in that peak panic in the COVID drop, we still managed to maintain the 200 week. And so the 200 week SMA is the critical level Bitcoin will bottom out on, in my personal opinion. Now, the question is, before we get into short-term analysis, when will that happen? That is a big question everyone's asking, right? Well, there's two separate scenarios here. Okay, one of which is the scenario, this yellow scenario, where we keep going downwards in this channel and we end up there in March. That's if we don't break the channel to the upside, we end up there at in March. So March is the closest possible date we will reach the 200-week SMA. Now, the other scenario is we break this channel to the upside. We come up to say 48k as speculation. We reject off of that at the same time the Federal Reserve talks about in, uh, interest rates. And then we end up back at the 200-week, slightly higher at around 25k uh, in say April to November. And the reason I pulled out April is because April is just after March and November is uh, quite important. November is based off the four-year cycle theory. And for those of you who might not watch my videos, right, I still think the four-year cycle exists and I'll tell you why. There is 1,400 days between the 2013 top, 2017 top, and the 2017 top, and the 2021 top. There is also 1,400 days between the 2014 bottom and the 2018 bottom, right? And on top of all of this, there's also 1,064 days exactly between the 2015 bottom and the 2017 bottom and the 2018 bottom and the uh, 2021 top. Sorry, so the 2017 top, 2021 top. So... You know, if you actually look at that data and you think about that, for that to be a coincidence on one, two, three, four, five separate occasions, it's very, very, very unlikely. And we've seen, if you believe that the bull market is over, if you believe the top was that November, which by definition of a bear market, it was, right? We've entered a bear market now by definition, in a financial market definition, we are in a bear market. That means that the lengthening cycles theory didn't take place. And hence, the four-year cycle theory actually did by most accounts minus the fact we didn't have a blow-off top. But a blow-off top is not actually a fundamental component to the four-year cycle. It was just speculation that that needed to happen at the end of every cycle based off two events, right? It's basically just diminishing returns. We didn't need that to happen. Um, and so... You know, looking at that, we can see that, uh, well, first and foremost, we can see that the bottom is going to be coming before November and the soonest it will come is March, in my personal opinion. Now, as long as we stay within this channel, which is very much a downtrend, right? And this yellow line on the 4 hourly chart shows us we are very much in a downtrend. We are heading towards a March bottom. And I think... What's going to happen on Bitcoin, and we'll look at the daily chart here, is we're going to come a little bit further up on this rally. In fact, we might just reject from here, but we might come a little bit further up on this rally, reject off this yellow line and head downwards to 30k. Why do I think that? Well, first and foremost, we have no bullish divergence on the RSI. We have seen a bullish MACD cross, but that's about the only fully bullish thing on this chart. We are below literally every single uh, medium to long-term resistance zone, and I mean that quite literally, every single one, right? We are below. Um, in, in terms of uh, the volume profile, we are on an area of support. However, we are heading into a large hill on the volume profile, which means it might be quite hard to climb up past 40k. Uh, and it is very worth noting as well, 
very much worth noting, and this is probably the most critical part, the volume is decreasing in this upwards trend, especially over the last four days. So basically what that means when volume decreases in an upwards trend or even a downwards trend, it means that the current trend is unsustainable. If volume is decreasing in a downwards trend, sorry, if volume is decreasing in an upwards trend, it means there is consistently becoming less and less buyers who are willing to buy at those higher prices as the trend goes up, which means the bears are slowly taking back control and it's going to come to a critical point in which we drop. Now, now, this has happened mo multiple times throughout this entire downwards trend. We've had small bounces with you know very low volume. Uh, for example, the bounce here from around 45k to the bounces to 52k. That was extremely low volume, descending volume, and we ended up uh, dropping down further because of that. Now. Usually what happens is we see these little bounces and then we drop down massively, right? We saw a bounce, we dropped down massively. And it would be uh, illogical to assume this time is any different due to the fact that this trend is very much your friend. And there's no uh, clear uh, bullish divergence. There's not really anything bullish from a chart or anything more bullish than there was back here other than the fact that the RSI is at a lower level. And that's not necessarily uh, an indication that the bottom is in. In fact, the RSI has recovered quite nicely to 37. Uh, for example, we were at 37 back here in November 27th when we were at 55K. And so the market is very much adjusted to this price region and people are no longer seeing this as an undervalued price. They're seeing it as the new normal. Uh, and that's just the unfortunate reality for the bulls. So what I would say is that the volume is very low in this upwards trend. When volume is low in an upwards trend, it means the upwards trend is unsustainable. Other than that, we are in a sharp downwards trend. We might, and I've said this in previous videos, and this is going in line with the one hour chart as well. We might swing up and test 40K here, but I don't see us having enough strength on Bitcoin to break 40K as for the time being. I think that the next step on Bitcoin is either a swing up to 40K and then a rejection or just a drop straight down to 30K. I think Bitcoin will end up at 30K uh, within the next few weeks here on Bitcoin. Now, it is worth noting we have one chart on Bitcoin that we need to be looking at, which is part of the bullish argument. And I have considered this greatly. And this is the weekly chart. And this is a line that's coming on the logarithmic scale. Um sorry, that you can draw from the 2017 all-time high at 20K straight through the uh, February 2021 retest of this line and May to July retests of this line and also the 33K test we just had. We can see that it holds up quite nicely. However, I would be inclined to neglect this line for the time being because you can draw any trend line from any region and when this one drops, you can probably just draw a new one. We have to consider when we're taking these trend lines too seriously, how many trend lines we have dropped on the way down from 60K to 33K uh, and people have just forgotten about. And so relying on just a fresh one uh, should be used as supporting evidence only. And at the moment, there's nothing to support that evidence. Everything just looks kind of bearish right now. And so until proven otherwise, until break and broken above 48K, or even broken above this yellow line, but mainly 48K, uh, we need to be assuming the worst and we need to be assuming that 30K is in the picture, especially given the fact there's been no bullish divergence on this entire drop down. There's not really un any underlying strength here the bulls have. The market is very much controlled by the bears and I would see this as a bull trap. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one.